As you might know, I'm quite a big fan of value for money. However, does something being incredibly cheap actually mean it's worth your money? This PC behind me is worth only £2. That's how much I paid for it at my local boot fair. So, is it actually worth that money, or are you better off saving up for something more expensive? Well, how about we have a look at that and see whether or not this is even worth the money I paid. So the inside of this PC is actually fairly interesting. I have here what I believe to be a max output 250 watt PSU. We also have up here four slots for RAM. Now this is DDR2 RAM as this is an E4500 CPU build. Now having four gigabytes of RAM is actually quite quite a lot for this sort of system so I'm, I'm fairly impressed by that. We've got four gigabytes of RAM in there. We've also got three 16x uh, PCIe ports, that's fantastic. And also our front panel I.O. is actually just one single connector which is actually quite nice. Uh, we have a 250GB hard drive in here, so nice and slow, uh, could probably do with having an SSD, but it is SATA, it's all SATA connected, there's no IDE in this system whatsoever. And that includes up with the DVD drive up here as well, there is no IDE at all, which is really nice for speeds, however I would appreciate having an SSD in here, however you can't really complain for just £2. Now if we go and have a look at the rear I.O. of this uh, PC, we're going to be left with nothing but disappointment unfortunately. Now obviously as we saw earlier there is no dedicated graphics, so we are relying on the onboard graphics of the motherboard, which is VGA output only. We also have an Ethernet jack and four USB 2.0 ports, which is fine I guess, it's just really, really lacking in comparison to what I'd like it to be. And there is something else I wanted to show you. If we look around this side of the PC, we can see that there is actually still a little plastic sort of protecting like pill. It's still on here. And as far as I'm aware, they stopped building these machines sort of in the late 2000s, like late 2000s or 2007, 2008. Now, I don't know what that is. It's a little bit disgusting, I have to admit. However, I would quite like to peel this off, so I'm going to set up the camera nicely and we're going to we're going to quickly peel this off, I think it's going to be quite nice. Okay, so here we go. This has been on here for probably over a decade and now I have, I have the pleasure of being able to finally peel it off and restore it to what should be its true glory. Ooh. Yeah, I just want to say, like, that, that is disgusting. I don't know what it is, but it's disgusting. Okay, so I did buy this PC on the premise that it wasn't working. So I paid £2 and they, it was trying to boot into Windows, is at least what they told me, and then it was just failing. So I, I think essentially all that means we've got a bad Windows install, so hopefully we should just be able to install Windows and it'll be good to go. But before we do do any of that, I'm going to give it a quick clean up and then we can get into testing the system and making sure everything works. Okay, so I'm just taking a quick break from troubleshooting this PC and as you can see, it's trying to boot up, the fans, all of everything's spinning up fine and then it's like, Ugh, and then it, it just closes everything down. So I'm going to run the default Windows repair. If that doesn't work, I'm not going to put in too much effort and I'll just see if I can do a fresh install of Windows XP. And okay, so Windows XP actually, I forget, takes so long to install. How it's, I mean, I'm so used to installing Windows 7, Windows 10, it, Windows XP is not nowhere near as easy. I completely forgot how far we've come in terms of how easy it is and how user-friendly it is to just install a new operating system nowadays. It's actually insane. Right, okay, so being a slight complication and I forgot about this. Steam doesn't run on Windows XP anymore so I can't download any of my games to test with. So uh, yeah, XP's installed and XP's working. But if I want to test any games, we're going to have to go back to the drawing board and get Windows 7 installed on here. Okay, so with Windows 7 now on a USB stick, it's time to get that, plug it into the new system, and see if we can get that installed. Okay, and there you go. You can see Windows 7 is now up and running, fully functional, and we are good to go. 
Now, we should probably be testing some games on here if we're going to see what gaming's like on this £2 PC. Now, because Steam is finally working, I can now load up my Steam library. However, as you've probably noticed, this PC has no dedicated video card. It only has the integrated graphics on the uh, Pentium CPU. It is a Pentium. It is. No, it, it's not a Pentium, it's a Core 2 Duo. We have a Core 2 Duo in this machine, it's an E4500. And so that means we are not going to be running anything particularly demanding. And so we're going to be going back all the way to the early and mid 2000s. And we'll be testing some GTA 3, I think we'll do some Half-Life maybe, uh, some original Counter-Strike, and I'll see if I can find anything else so I can get to run on this machine. And we'll, we'll test out how those games run just now. Okay then, and here we are jumping into our first game, Half-Life. And as you can see, you know, we're getting, you know, fairly, you know, it's fairly decent FPS for, for what this machine is packing. And yeah, sure, we've had to lower the resolution a bit compared to what the monitor is capable of. However, we have a playable game here. Like, this is a game that we can play and it's on a £2 computer. I don't think we can really ask for much more than that. Okay, so GTA 3 I could only get to run at 480p, however, it is buttery smooth, we are talking 60 plus FPS average, this is more than capable of running GTA 3. Now granted, I did try GTA 4 as well, and it, it just can't even boot the game, so unfortunately there'll be no GTA 4, however GTA 3 runs absolutely fantastically, you will be able to play GTA 3 as if it's Back, all the way back whenever GTA 3 originally came out and no, no I don't remember the year off the top of my head. Hello, this is Editing Robert. I'm in the middle of editing the video right now and uh, as you can see I've done, a, I've done a quick little Google search and I have now found out GTA 3 was released in October 2001. One year after I was born. Makes me feel really young but also really old. I'm not sure which way to take that. Anyway, I digress. Back to the video. Okay, so since Counter-Strike runs on the exact same engine as Half-Life, it's going to be pretty similar performance, and as you can see from our maximum, average, and minimum graph here, they are pretty much identical. Now, obviously they're different games, however, running on the same engine, released the same sort of time, they are going to be exactly, pretty much exactly the same. And yeah, the data's here to prove it. We can play both of them just about, just about at 720p. But that's not too bad. So this last game that we're testing is Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, and that really does bring me back to my childhood because I used to be absolutely obsessed with the Roller Coaster Tycoon series. Now, I Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 was my favourite, however, because Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 is obviously more demanding, that's the one we're going to be testing out today. And as you can see, it doesn't actually perform too badly, sort of getting almost 60 FPS maximum and just over 40 FPS average. Now, granted, obviously it's not fantastic, but it is just about playable, like you can just about get away with this as a smooth game. And it's also doing that at 768p, so it's not half bad. So those were the gaming benchmarks, but what's this actually like for more day-to-day -day tasks like web browsing and word processing? Well, with the 4GB of DDR2 RAM that this machine has, it's not actually too bad at multitasking. I can quite comfortably sit and have a YouTube video in one tab, browse Facebook or Reddit in another, and then do some word processing in Microsoft Word at the same time. This machine, despite its age, is actually pretty damn good, and it really does help having a fresh installation of Windows installed. I imagine it would slow down over time, but that could be helped with a cheap SSD, and that would be perfectly reasonable to install because this motherboard does have four SATA ports included, and and spare SATA power as well, so you would quite comfortably be able to install an SSD in this machine if you so choose. So here we got, we've really got to come to a verdict here, should you buy a £2 PC? The answer is no. No you should not buy a £2 PC for gaming. Now if you want to do some basic word processing and web browsing, sure, £2 PC will do you just fine, but for anything more demanding like video editing or gaming, definitely you're going to have to be spending more than £2. So this is a bit of a weird video for me, so if you did enjoy it then please do be sure to leave a like and let me know if you would like to see more reviews of incredibly budget and older hardware. It would be appreciated if you guys could let me know down in the comment section. Now be sure to hit like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.